Greetings from the past, my fellow time travelers, and welcome back to another episode of The Ladder. My name is Ty, and let's see what's going to happen. I waited one week, and now I'm finally going to know what's going to happen. My consciousness rapidly slips away from me, and without meaning to... Get, get away from him! Isabella? No way. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're off to a good start. Hearing that voice, it's as if I've been doused with a bucket full of ice cold water. Familiar. Too familiar. And more importantly, it shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be hearing it here. She shouldn't be here. Immediately, my eyes snap open. And right there, right on the attic doorway, stands Isabella, of all people. A rolling pin on one hand and a standard issue police taser in the other. My taser. She must have borrowed it from a caliph. Where else could she have gotten one? I doubt she has ever used one even. Hell, the way she holds it right now, this guy can easily disarm her in one hit. But there's something in her. In her eyes. Although there's a look of fear in them and her hands shakes. She keeps the weapon trained and pointed at Scumbag's lackey. Untrained or not, she does not plan to leave here without putting up a fight, it seems. Admirable, really. But it's just not something we need right now. I need her to be away from here. I need her safe. But the chances of that happening grow slim with every laugh that it slips from him. Oh, this is just getting better and better. The Bratwurst won't be pleased with the number of bodies we have to dispose of today, you know. Tell me, how many of you are there? So I can prepare the proper number of bags. Damn it! What the fuck is going on? Why is she here in the first place? Did she follow after me? Who else came with her? Zack? Rebecca? Are they all here? Panic surge within me. She knows how bad the situation is. But did she really have to run in here and expose herself like that? Does she even know how to use a taser? For fuck's sake! More than worrying for my life, it's her I'm concerned about. Getting strangled and dying by choking isn't part of the plan. But her following me here isn't either. This is why I prefer to do things alone. This is why I'd rather be the only one to take the consequences. I don't even want to think what this bastard might do to her after he's done with me. Though my voice comes off nearly a croak, I try to tell her as much. She has to leave. Stay far away from here and these people. Don't! Don't! Damn it, Isabella! Get out of here! <sighs> Another bout of pain erupts in my side, cutting off my words. A cry of agony bursts from my mouth. I can taste blood in my tongue as I heave, attempting to get in as much air despite the towel still coiled around my neck. Ash? You're going to lose air quickly that way, Dummkopf. Better keep it shut. Get out. 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 Val! Don't be stupid! I'm not leaving you here! <laughs> he laughs. Too cruel. Too unforgiving. The way each note beats against my ears, in spite of the warmth in them sends ch chills down my spine. This is a man whose hands have already been stained with blood before. He won't hesitate. I'd follow his advice if I were you, little girl. What could you possibly do with a toy? Just hand it over and be on your way. It'll probably be too difficult for a little girl like you to use. There's a moment of silence. Fuck! I can barely keep my eyes open. But in the next second, though I still don't exactly understand what's happening, Isabella shouts. Not a cry of pain. Not a yell of panic. But one that's resolute. Firm. Perhaps in a tone that's leaks fiercer than any I've heard from her before. Try me! Ashen Duck! I do. More out of instinct and desire to survive, closing my eyes before my mind can fully proces process what's going on. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not going to do 
any of this what you're going to tell me. I mean, sorry? <laughs> that wasn't the right time to tell me that my Windows needs to be updated. So, please, shut the fuck up. This is good enough. And please don't shut down. <laughs> Holy moly. That was a mood killer. It all happens in a blur. The telltale sound of a taser being discharged resounds through the room. The air crackles. Something whizzes by, almost too close to my ear. Followed by the thud of something blunt connecting solidly with another object. The next thing I know, the towel strangling me has started to loosen. <gasps> nice one, Isabella! How oh, cool! Oh my god! Nice, nice, nice. Nice! Ashton attempted to fight back, but his attack quickly disarmed him. Loop looping a towel around his neck and strangling him. But just when he was about to lose consciousness, a familiar voice rings in the room and... It happened. I collapse on the floor, dazed and gasping for air. From a peripheral, through the haze of blood rushing and sound slowly flittering back, the butler buckles, he spasms once. Then, without much fuss, falls face first beside me, knocked unconscious by 50,000 volts of electricity and a fucking rolling pin. He'll be out for a while. I have no idea whether I should laugh or cry at that. Somewhere in front of me, my oxygen-deprived brain vaguely registers Isabel's form. She slumps on the floor, also breathing heavily. Right next to her trembling hands, both the taser and the rolling pin lie useless and forgotten, while the mood in the room eases. A long, gradual process of tension lifting. For countless seconds, remain quiet with only our short gasp and sighs to fill the silence, along the adrenaline ebb away and both are breathing to slow. Not a true response by any means, but simply a brief respite. There's still the curse. We are still inside the mansion, in imminent danger. We still have no idea how to fix this. Outside, the rain seems to only intensify. Lightning flashes fleetingly somewhere, white and piercing and the sky rumbles. No rest for the wicked. Hmm. I stir first, once recovered, having regained some semblance of sense and strength. Breathing still hurts, but it's bearable, as it's moving. Although every small motion causes a wince. There will be a bruising tomorrow, I can imagine. I can manage. Retrieving my gun from under the bed is easy. But only with some effort, I am able to drag an unconscious man to the far end of the room snapping one end of a handcuff on his wrist while fastening the other on the bed frame. That should keep him restrained for a few hours, in case he wakes up prematurely. All for this, Isabel is quiet. In fact, she hasn't even moved since. Her hands still shake and taking in long draws of breath while she stares vacantly in front of her. Almost as if she's in shock. Perhaps she isn't, even accepting any result. Spur spurred only by some kind of desperation. Now it's sinking in. Unfortunately, we need to get moving. We don't have time to wait for everything to register in our heads. Kneeling in front of her, I give her a light shake. Belle, we need to go. We can't stay here. Slowly, she turns, staring at me with wide eyes. Where flickers briefly in them along with something ineffable. Then, without warning, she lifts a hand and slaps me right across the face. Oh, damn. <laughs> She's mad. The sound of it cracks the air, shattering the silence like a fragile glass breaking. Despite the familiar rumble of thunder outside, it manages to ring louder above the storm. I don't even know what hit me, until my head has already snapped back and my cheek stings with her anger. And it is anger. In spite of the stillness and the lack of words afterwards, not fuming though, never fuming, but the kind that burns lightly and soundlessly. A frustration instead of a seething rage, one that ebbs just as quickly as it flows. And once the tide subsides, there's only that gleam in her eyes, warm, steadfast, and unflinching. 
quietly, I brace myself for the truth underneath the gaze. It slips from her lips softly, nearly fading under the sound of the rain still falling fast, if not for the weight in each of her words. What is wrong with you? Belle. If Zack didn't slip up, no one would have known where you went. Belle, one person knowing is enough. Any more than that, and... You almost died! He could have suffocated you right then and there, and you could have died! I told Zack to give me four hours. That would have been enough time to... It would have been too late! And by the time anyone ever finds out, you're already fertilizer! Possible. She trails off, drags one indrawn breath after another. A brief lull as her frustration finally gives, dissolves into something more pensive and somber. Her shoulders drop, and though her voice rises hoarsely and weary, in her next words, there's only certainty. You count too, you know, when I said, that night when I told you I don't want to lose anyone anymore, that includes you, alive. We're still here, Ash. You have us. Oh. And once their meaning fall, roar. It does so, so not with force of a dam breaking or a raging storm. But with the gentle, steady warmth of her hearth burning, an ember easing slowly, lightly, rising and giving, until all that's left is a truth, an understanding. Not alone. Never alone. No. Ashton. Having recovered, Ashton quickly urged Isabella to move, knowing it wasn't safe to stay idle. Without warning, however, Isabella slapped him, furious at him for keeping people in the dark. She reminded him of what was important, and with it came a realization about himself. No. It lingers, even as we both drift back into silence, and her words take root. Because in the gratitude that swells after is another warmth blooming. Pleasant, welcoming, like finding home, like finding ourselves in the haze as squall as left, creating something fragile yet immutable in both of us. It's in her eyes, in the way she holds my gaze, unwavering, in the way she carries herself despite sitting amidst the place she fears, in the way she keeps herself from trampling and falling apart because of fear. Fear is inconsequential when people she cares about are at risk. A change. She realizes that now. Holds on to it. Another little thing. Another small thing from her that may go, may go unnoticed and pass by quietly, but will eventually amount to a lot of things. Tiny gestures that mean nothing at first, but began to matter to me one day. Until... Oh. Despite myself, a small smile slips from my lips as the same warmth from earlier unfurls in my chest. Unhurried, familiar, and bright from all these years I've carried it, but have never given the words for it. Stop smiling like that, Ashton! <laughs> I'm not done scolding you! No. But this time, this time they come easy. I heard all of it. Don't worry. Are you really okay? That guy hit you a little too hard on the head. Here, let me... I reach up just as she extends a hand towards my face, catching her wrist in a light grip, drawing it closer and folding her hands in between mine. Although her expression does shift into a mild confusion, she does not pull away like I'm expecting. She simply stares at me, searching. For her to allow a gesture from me that's perhaps too close, it tells a lot how far things have already shifted in the past few years. Rattled in mine, her hand still trembles. Most of the tremors has already subsided by now, though I doubt it will fade away this soon. Even as I trace the lines of her palm in what I hope is a comforting gesture. I'm sorry, No. For what? Is this about what happened tonight? No. You can apologize later, when... No, well, this too, but it's not just about this. It's for... it's for a lot of things. For calling you clumsy and careless and a scatterbrain. Are you sure this isn't a concussion? Oh. You would think that, wouldn't you? Well, you don't usually apologize. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, too. For all the times I've teased you and made you cry. Unexpectedly, her fingers tighten around mine, her hands falling between us as something tender shifts in the air. Another exhale. 
Another drum breath eases out of mine. <laughs> out of me, filled with every hesitation and uncertainties. But when I finally choose to break silence, it's only when I know that what will slip past my mouth is the one truth I will hold against the world. But for all those callous words, despite all those, there's nothing I don't love about you. In fact, those things, I love those. And everything, everything that's you. Oh, <laughs> for a long moment, she offers no response. Her grip on my hands merely tightens. Although my heart's pounding hard against my ears, I take a chance and look up, slightly leaning away and giving her a cautious glance, more than ready to hear her rejection. Instead, I find her on the brink of tears, with an almost unreadable expression on her face. When she noticed my eyes on her, she hastily reaches up and wipes it with the back of her hands. It does not keep them from falling and soon they trail down her cheeks, despite her best attempts. To say this is panic shooting right up at the base of my throat is a complete understatement. This isn't how I've expected this to go. Hey, Belle, did I... did I say something wrong? Why would you? I... I don't even have anything. What? I don't have anything. I'm not rich. I live no. off instant noodles almost every day. I can't do anything properly without someone helping me. Except maybe if it's drawing, but that's beside the point. I didn't even get to graduate, even if I was so close. <laughs> I'm not even sure that scholarship will get me anywhere. And, and, ever since I came here, in the five years you've known me, I've got us into all kinds of trouble. So why would you, why would you even say that? I I'm not... Oh. Maybe it's the moment itself that spurs me to it. The desperation, the fear of almost dying, that I've already said more than what I'll usually allow myself, and I might as well finish before I lose my nerve. No matter the reason, I reach out for her, gently, so unlikely the way she barged into our lives so many years ago. The way she came in would leave a terrible impression on anyone, really, and yet, yet it's people like her that you don't easily forget. It's them that gradually warms their way into a people's life. Until the very thought of losing them becomes unbearable. Isabella trails off once my palms brush brushes against her tear-stained cheeks. But she neither pulls away nor pushes my hands off. Rather, she looks at me wide-eyed, with another searching look. I only have one answer for that. It doesn't matter. All of that is still you, and that's enough for me. No promises. Only truth. Perhaps the only genome thing I can offer for her at the moment. We don't even know what will happen, or if we'll su ever survive this. So instead of words, I lean in, our foreheads briefly touching, before brushing my lips tenderly against hers. Oh, how sweet! <laughs> I knew it! Nice! Finally! The kiss is nothing intimidated, by any means. There's a brief second once her lips touch when she tenses, unsure. A long moment of not knowing that to do with her hand what to do with her hands until she settles them on mine. Slipping it up, my arm in a light grip, afraid. Too afraid to make a mistake or hurt. But for now, it's enough. It's the closest we can come to it. Rather than give out empty promises or grand proclamations, we have this. Something she soon understands as her shoulders ease, and she permits me to draw her closer, deepening the kiss. Softly and gently. A short second of simply allowing the world to melt away around us, and this to roar above e anything else. Like every little thing between us that has built up to this one simple, single point in time. A moment that becomes ours and ours alone. Something to hold close until all of this is over. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm shaking. <laughs> Those moments are so hard to read properly. No. Understanding how much she also meant to him, Ashton took both of her hands in his and apologized, and in a rare moment of honesty, confessed what he truly felt for her. The one truth he always hold against the world. 
We part later to the sound of the world rushing back around us. Thunder, rain and lightning, all to remind us both of reality we have to face. Enough to dampen the mood and force back to worry I've temporarily forgotten. Yet, when I glance back at Isabella, all she has for me is a small smile, bright and hopeful. And it is strange enough. One that I tried to draw from when I rest my forehead against hers one last time, before leading us both out, her hand in mine. Oh, <laughs> So sweet! <sighs> Power still hasn't come back when we make our way downstairs. Tricky considering the stairs to the attic are a bit old. One misstep and anyone might end up slipping and falling. You are lucky if that's all that will happen to you. With the stairs this steep, a broken neck is a likely outcome. Thankfully, Isabella is here to guide me through the darkness. She knows this place better than anyone. After all, in spite of all the misfortunes it has brought to us. Careful, the floorboards over there aren't very sturdy. Right on cue, the same board I'm stepping on creaks and suddenly breaks. The piece is falling somewhere with a dull thumb. Oh shit. Scumbag wouldn't be too happy about that. Ow, my foot. See? I told you so. You never listen to me. They renovated the whole mansion and they can't even replace one tiny part of the house. Why don't you file a complaint to BRC then? I'm sure they'd be thrilled to hear it. You know it was such a rush job. Outside, the winds have intensified. Even from here, I can hear the gusts battering the window in the attic. It makes you wonder why up until now, the only person we have encountered from this house is the butler. Although, to some degree, that makes sense. He is in charge of running the place. Where are the other servants, though? In this storm, wouldn't anyone want to stay inside? A likely assumption is they are all asleep. The route I've taken doesn't really pass by the rooms they have likely assigned as the servants' quarters. However, they have also heightened security. I've pressed it off earlier, thinking they will be posted a lot closer to where the master's rooms are, but the second floor is devoid of anyone as well. As if every inhabitant of this place has suddenly disappeared overnight. More importantly, where's that scumbag? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. The fact that we're here right in the fucking middle of it makes me all the more queasy. And that feeling only escalates once we reach the landing and Isabelle swings the door open. She pauses abruptly right in the doorway and I almost run into her. A look of confusion in her as she looks wildly around the place, wordlessly taken in her surroundings. With each turn, it shifts her gaze. Her shoulder only grows tenser and a look of apprehension slowly dawns on her. Isabella, what are you... We aren't supposed to be here. Sure enough, when I look up, we're standing right in the kitchen. Pots, pans and all. I knew there was something wrong. How did we get down here? Um. Well... In one corner, second Rebecca watches almost su a surprise to see us. Mekala also with them. Of course, she didn't listen to me even if I've already exceeded the 15 minutes we've agreed on. Although Kala and Strength seems to have already returned to her, enough for her to be able to stand unassisted. The empty plate on the counter appears to have played a part on that. Good news, I guess. As for the other two, however, relieved as I am that they have had the sense to wait and not venture deeper into the mansion, I can't keep but roll my eyes at both of them. Zack, I said four hours. I, I, I know, but Isabel <laughs> asked and... Come on, bro, you know I ain't a very good liar. And it didn't even occur to you to stop her? We all tried, all right? She was out the door before we could say anything. And how did you guys even get in here? All three of them exchange a look. One that I absolutely don't like. In the end, it's Isabella who speaks up all that with a bit of hesitation. We... we heard someone scream, Ash. It led us here. Without a warning, the door behind us slams shut. We need to get out of here. Screw right. I need to get these people out of here. Lucky we're in the kitchen and we have two ways out, the back door and the cellar office. Except the hedge won't budge when I pull at it and neither does the back door, as if something has locked it firmly on the other side. Zack also gives it a few tries, but even with the big guy's strength, it won't open. There's a long bout of silence in which we all simply look at each other, likely sharing the same thoughts. 
We're trapped. Something or someone has intentionally led us here. Fuck! In that same moment, once realization drowns in, something shifts again. And what that is, we're going to see in the next episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you already subscribed, click on the notification bell down below so you get notified when I upload my videos. Share us on all your social media, and guys, I'll see you in the future or back in the letter. Bye bye. <laughs>